Folks, just a few hours ago, a new twist has emerged in the Rashid HSR case. It is said that there were five police officers on duty on the day that the deal was signed, the fake deal between HSR and ECHO, Advanced Technologies, and detectives from the DCI, Directorate of Criminal Investigations, had interviewed four of those five, questioned them to get information. But one has been missing for the last two days. And of course, detectives were very eager to talk to him. Well, a few hours ago, they found him, but he was not alive. Sergeant Kene was found in his house in Imara Daima Estate dead. What? What is going on here? <laughs> now, the police are playing their cards here very close to their chest. But we have information from those who have viewed what is left of Sergeant Kene, yeah, that he has a bullet wound in his head. It is also said that a suicide note has been left behind. At this juncture, we have no idea what is on the said suicide note. But hopefully, going forward, we shall get more information. Now, it is extremely difficult not to link uh, the demise of Sergeant Kene to the events, very dramatic events, that are said to have taken place at the Deputy President's office. The alleged fake deal signing yeah, for which uh, Rashid Echessa has already been presented in court and accused of. In fact, it is almost impossible not to link yeah, his death with that, especially because he was the only officer out of the five who had yet to be questioned by the DCI. And the immediate assumption here is that he has been silenced. And if we were to follow that train of thought, it would lead us to an even bigger and more nagging question. What was it? What information did Sergeant Kene have yeah, that was so important, so critical, yeah, that he had to be silenced? Or if we were to go with the suicide theory yeah, that is being presented very early here, yeah, what was it? that would cause him to take his own life. Folks, this issue is getting very scary. Now, apparently, Sergeant Kene was an administration policeman. In our country, administration policemen, or APs, get training that is very different from the regular police training. That is how it has been. Yeah, although right now there are so many changes and reforms happening in the police service. Yeah, but that's what has been happening in the past. And APs are usually tougher, more fierce and braver than the regular police. They also mostly serve in hardship areas, deep in the rural areas. Yeah, their camps normally are very deep in the Kenyan rural area. Indeed, they're the policemen, the chiefs, deep in the rural areas use. Unfortunately, there have also been too many cases, way too many cases in our country, of administration policemen killing themselves. Many times, a love triangle of sorts is usually involved. In other words, there have been too many cases of APs killing themselves over affairs of the heart. All that is true, but the circumstances in this case all point back to the DP's office. To be more specific, the DP office Manenos. Because you're scheduled to be interviewed by the DCI, you don't show up, so that interview does not take place. And then a day later, you're found dead in your house. <laughs> now, of course, all this suggests that there is much more to the Chesa case than Kenyans know so far. Obviously, when people start losing their lives, 
uh, suicide or murder or whatever, then you know this is serious. Wah, 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 wah. Even as we wait for more information, yeah, that will help us shed a bit more light on this very curious development. It is important for us to realize, those of us who don't know, that policemen, unfortunately, have always been used in political games and intrigues in this country. You see, policemen are trained, first and foremost, to follow orders. Sometime in January 1969, a very curious incident unfolded at the home of the then Minister of Economic Planning, yeah, Tom Boyer. In his Nairobi home at Convent Drive in Nairobi, that is in the Lavington area, he was one day informed that there was somebody at the gate who wanted to see him. Now this was normal for Tom Boyer. He was a very popular politician. And he used to like to mix with the ordinary folks. And many times they would come looking for him in his house. So there was nothing extraordinary about that. And the minister sent the person who had come with this information to go and find out who it was. Yeah, who was standing at the gate wanting to see the minister. But then somehow at the last minute, even as the person he had sent had already gone and was near the gate, the minister decided to emerge from his house to find out who it was looking for him. A policeman, who was part of his security detail, drew his gun and fired at Tom Boyer. He missed the minister by inches. Boyer dived back into his house yeah, and survived that one. The policeman was arrested, of course, but Kenyans knew that there were games being played yeah, because funny stories started emerging that all oh, the officer was drunk and so on and so forth. And he was never charged for attempted murder. Instead, he was charged, wait for this one, for damaging the minister's Mercedes car. The bullet which missed Tom Boyer. He had damaged his car slightly. <laughs> now the reason I've told you this story is that in this case, yeah, anything could have happened. Yeah, because some people tend to think too much inside the box, if there's such a thing. My deep and sincere condolences to the family and loved ones of the late Sergeant Kenei. My hope and prayer yeah, is that they'll get some answers yeah, to this very curious and strange incident. Although in incidences like this, ordinarily, that is a very tall order to expect answers. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.